Northwest Music, presented by the Cumberland Hotel. We have live music Wednesdays and Saturday nights with award-winning musicians and a menu offering everything from burgers to ribs, wings, and fish and chips. Welcome to Northwest Music. We are coming to you from Shaw TV Studios in Campbell River. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. Joining myself and Doug Cox today, our very special guest, Mr. Bill Bourne. of love it say come on me I am the way keep your hand on the plow hold on so if my day gets black as night I know that love it is my light keep your hand on the plow oh Hold on, 
<laughs> I know. All right, I'm ready for my nap. <laughs> that was so wonderful. How old were you when you were first kind of exposed to music? Well, uh, actually, you know, like my mom played in the band and sang and played the guitar and stuff mm. uh, when she was pregnant with me. Oh, so okay. So really, early. you can <laughs> say I was learning music already then. Yeah. I mean, What's your earliest memory of music? Um, just being at the uh, house parties and dances with my family and uh, and our neighbors and our you know sort of extended family and stuff and uh, playing music around the house. My dad played accordion. My mom played the guitar and sang. And there was uncles that played the fiddle and uh, banjo and uh, all kinds of stuff. You know. Now you grew up in Alberta. Yeah. Right in yeah, uh, near Red Deer, southwest of Red Deer. Okay. And our community was called Ridgewood, and there was a hall up the road. Mm. But there was other halls in different, you know, districts around, and that's often where my parents would play, in those halls okay. for wedding dances or any kind of celebration. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So, Bill, what culture is your, is your family from? Well, my dad, uh, his family came from England. Oh, okay. His parents. My mom, her grandparents came from Iceland. So... I don't know, they listened to Don Messer's Jubilee and those kind of shows <laughs> right? back in the day. Yeah. And that's where they were getting some of their music, for sure. And they were farmers in, in Alberta? Ah, uh, yeah, family? farmers, yeah. yeah. Full-time farmers. So you were kind of a, you were, um, I don't want to call you old, but you were <laughs> <laughs> sort of one of the, one of the folk artists in, in, in Alberta that was there kind of before it really exploded and became a, an industry, right? It was oh, sort of one yeah. of the first wave of folk performers from... Yeah, from I Alberta. remember auditioning for Book and Agent, right? you know, in Edmonton when I was 21. And yeah, he goes, uh, you know, you got to learn 45, 50, mm. top 40 songs and get a rhythm ace. And that's the way, it, that's the way it's got to be. Well, I never really did that. I never got a rhythm ace, and I learned a few tunes just so I could get by in a bars in northern Alberta. But it was interesting because when even going into the studio or talking to guys about recording, they said, well, it's got to have a Nashville sound or, or an L.A. sound, or otherwise there's no use to even record it. And I'm like, you got to be kidding, man. What about uh, Alberta? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just didn't really sort of stick with that. I kind of went on my own. But I'd already heard enough music from sort of outside of pop music, especially, if, you know, radio, CKUA radio and stuff like that, that I was, like, really uh, much more open-minded. In your early days, maybe not necessarily that early, but you were also, for a short time, a member of a really famous Celtic band. From oh the UK, yeah, yeah. Right? Was that the Tannehill Weavers? Ta Tannehill Weavers. Yeah. yeah. And how did how did that all happen? Yeah, it's interesting. Eh? Oh, well, that was kind of fluky. Uh, there was a promoter, um, Jim McLaughlin in Edmonton, and he brought the Tannehills over to Canada for the first time, 1980. And uh, anyway, they came and did some festivals, and and myself and my buddy Jim Morrison, we opened for those guys a few times and got to know them. And then I went on a tour with them as a road manager because I had a new van. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they, uh, after a while, they asked me to join the band. And that was as a fiddle player? No, I was oh, playing okay. bazooki. Bazooki? And bass pedals. Oh, 
really? Oh, Standing on one foot a lot. You know. And was Doogie McLean in that band at that at that time? No. 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 Um, there, there was no fiddle player when I was playing with the band. There was a flute player, Phil Smiley, and Roy Glane and uh, Alan McLeod. Wow. He played the pipes. And that's how you ended up with Born in McLeod after that was... Yeah, well, uh, Alan stopped playing with the Tannehills a while after I left. And, um, yeah, he came to Canada. He wanted to come to Canada. He wanted to move to Canada. He had friends here and stuff. And uh, Anyway, I talked him into coming over and working on an album, and we won a Juno Award with that. Right. Called Dance and Celebrate. So that was interesting because... Celtic music, and I, the only thing is my parents played some of that, right? Mm -hmm. Dance music that was derived from Celtic music. It wasn't, you wouldn't call it Celtic music, it was closer to Cape Breton, if anything, but it didn't even, it wasn't even like Cape Breton music. Right. It was kind of like Western Canadian fiddle playing. So yeah. sort of almost Métis meets. Yeah, yeah, Métis definitely, uh, yeah, uh, definitely a different kind of approach, different sound than oh. the... Than the so you you were kind of also um, you were almost like world music before world music was cool, right? You you've explored a lot of different styles of guitar playing, and people will see that on the show today. But yeah. it started it start with sort of country, and then the, the more Celticy flavors, and then all the other stuff you've yeah. gone through after that. Yeah, you know, for my own playing, by the time I was sixteen, I could I knew fifty Gordon Lightfoot songs. Wow, I could play mm -hmm. them cold, one after the other. <laughs> so there was a big, big influence on my playing at that time. Right. Massive. But uh, yeah, also, I started noticing that those traditional forms like Celtic music or flamenco or blues or whatever, there's qualities in the music that are really potent, and that's how they sort of remained over mm -hmm. time, right? right, obviously. And so if you can get a handle on those elements, and that's what really attracts everybody to that music to begin with, mm -hmm. right. then, um, yeah, you really feel it inside, you know, and, and that's key, I guess, to play the music, to be able to feel what's going on. Is there a typical style that you lean towards? No, I, I noticed something interesting uh, when I started to play Mississippi John Hurt music. Okay. It, uh, it felt easy to play. Mm. And it felt like, well, it's interesting. It felt like if you made a little mm. mistake, it didn't really matter. Right. It's funny that. It's like it's the music was bigger than that somehow. That's the whole story. That's my whole career right there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 True enough. This uh, this next song, I don't know if it's uh, is it? Yeah, we can do next song. Uh, was really inspired by Mississippi John Hurt. Uh, he played a style of blues called Piedmont, and um, I don't really play Piedmont blues, but but anyway, he inspired this song. It's called The House, which I guess. Mm -hmm. That stands forever All our brothers All our sisters We all live together Yeah, help us build a Brand new house Filled with love and kindness Standing here In this new day Sweet love it binds us So oh, come on They struggled for their freedom. Oh, the politician turned light about the reason. Oh, the rich man used his power to hold his high position. 
Yeah, the poor man's lonely hour. Spirit was in remission. Oh, come on, build a brand new house, a house that stands forever. Oh, yeah. All of our brothers, all of our sisters, we all live together. Hey, feel the fear was down in our hearts, and not know where we were going. Showing oh the warm machine in place, all those people starving. Good God, but for the grace of you, we'd all be dying. Hey, come on and build a brand new house, a house that stands forever. All our brothers, all our sisters, we all live together. Hey, come on and build a brand new house filled with love and kindness standing here this new day sweet love it binds us talk it up trust in love and take away her sorrow and I hear the cry down in our hearts nobody cared to listen all got to take our brother's part asserting our position oh come on and build a brand new house a house that stand forever oh yeah all of our brothers all of our sisters we all live together yeah come on and build brand new house filled with love and kindness standing here in this day sweet love it binds up Toe tapper. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Not just yours, but all. I was sitting here going. Mm. Yeah, good. So, what what is it that draws you to a particular song? Like, how do you decide? Well, that one, you know, really speaks to me, and that one, eh, not so much. And I don't know. Like, it's a feeling you have. Feeling, yeah. You know, and I mean, writing songs is like. How do you write a song? I'm telling you, man, like I can write for weeks and get nothing, and then three minutes, something inspiring will just happen, and I've got a song okay. that blows all of that other stuff away. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't really know anything about it. I'm trying to learn. You know, really. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's got to do with how you feel about it, you know? Yeah. Like if you, any kind of music, I guess. I've. Uh, yeah, I don't know. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we're going to give you a chance to think about that. We're going to take a short okay. break. Uh, Good so idea. you're watching Northwest Music, and we will be back right after this. On Dunsmuir Avenue in Cumberland is the Cumberland Hotel, and every Wednesday night is an acoustic night with award winning musicians Cox, Bachman, and Lee. A five ounce burger and any pint. Pool tables, darts, food, and music. Now back to Northwest Music with Mary Ruth Harris and Doug Cox. Welcome back. You're watching Northwest Music on Shaw TV. We are coming to you from the Campbell River Studios. I'm Mary Ruth Harris with Mr. Doug Cox and Mr. Bill Bourne, our very special musical guest. Now, before the break, we were talking about inspiration. So, Doug, where do you get your inspiration from? Uh, I'm mostly, I mean, from everything, really. It can be, it can be from a 
somebody in your family or it can be from something that's happened or it can be from the cup of coffee that you had that that morning you know it's different it's different all the time um, I think if you have to go looking for it then you're in trouble you know what I mean like it's to me playing music often comes from a place of real stillness and if you're if you've got a lot going on in your life or there's a lot going on in the world sometimes I, I find that a harder place to come from musically Do you feel that way too Bill or? Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's funny, like, there's all these really seems like crazy things happening in the world. And people I've, I've heard or read, uh, where's all the protest songs uh, about this, you guys? You know? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's interesting. I, I really get into politics sometimes in social media, but I, uh, I don't sort of relate it to music in any way. Yeah. It's, uh, music is, to me, has a big spiritual element to it. I mean, that's just, I guess, my own mm -hmm. perception. It's not necessarily so, but uh, to me it does. And um, I guess, uh, you know, children all over the world, I, like, I, I, I'm always sort of look at the big picture, um, often anyway, and it can be a bit frustrating to do that, but children uh, really are... Uh, so it's like our responsibility to look after them. Mm -hmm. I, it really seems like it as, as uh, you know, nations, as uh, mm -hmm. just the inhabitants of this world. So like that's a pretty inspiring thing for me, uh, or the whole thing about kids and everything. I think that the, um, the music Justice. business has started to talk about the creation of music as part of the cut and paste idea of how you're supposed to have a musical career now right. which means well you make a website and you think about your image and you get yourself an agent and a manager and you write a couple songs and, and you, you think about what YouTube. you're going to wear and, you know the the, yeah. the actual connection with creativity is not a a business maneuver <laughs> right, right. and it's yeah. uh it's really big it's it's things have become so busy and we've become so drowned in information and sensory stimulation right now that right. that the idea of sitting in a place where you can be tie up. into the muse yeah. is uh, it's a whole different thing right do you think that the business side of music has almost become like a like it's squashing the creative side of it like compared to when you both came up through the ranks through your 20s and 30s and now mm. you're in your 40s so like yeah <laughs> that, that like, it's really shifted over the last thirty years, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, Absolutely. yeah. It's, uh, I have a friend who um, is a, a folk singer from the '60s and the '70s, and his son is also a folk singer. And he's, we were talking about this kind of thing, and, and he said to me, "You know, when when me and my friends were first playing music, all we cared about was the music. We right. didn't we didn't even think about careers and." Right. It was really about the connection that you made where you just sat down and played. And right. he said, none of my, my son's friends even do that. They don't even consider doing that. Really? They never have, you know. Now, both of you have had quite a bit of experience, not only as solo players, but also as collaborators. Do you mm -hmm. have, do you find that the collaboration takes you to another level that you don't get when you're Absolutely, solo? yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's always a, any kind of collaboration, even Doug and I playing together, what, what it happens is there's another sound that's created that wasn't there before, and it's really, really, it is really interesting and really inspiring, and it's fun and beautiful. Um, those things kind of have a life of their own. The music really sort of tells you what to do in most cases. Yeah. And uh, interesting, you know, talking about all that, I used to be a mechanic, before, you know, in my late teens, early 20s, till I started playing music in 75. And, and um, man, I made a pact with myself. Because my dad really wanted me to be a mechanic. He was happy I was a mechanic, right? He didn't want me to be a, mu a professional mm -hmm. musician at all. But I, you know, I got to the point where I just had to do something about it. So I quit. But I made this pact. I said, I'm never going to play any kind of anything. I'm never going to do anything in the music business that I don't believe and feel is mm. the right thing for me to be doing. That's an excellent pack to have. 
And the first audition I did, they s <laughs> I just, I walked out of there and said, that guy tried to tell me what to play. Mm -hmm. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> so, I mean, you don't have to go down that road, but. Bill, you're, you're one of the most original guitar players um, that I've ever come across. And I think what you've done is taken a little bit from a whole bunch of different styles and created your own thing with it. And I also think that yeah. you learned a lot of what you learned before you could sign on to YouTube and learn how to sound exactly like everybody else. Right? Like I, I find with the players who are a little bit older than me, the, you had to sit in your own bedroom and figure things out mostly probably. There, yeah. wasn't, there wasn't anybody there to show you how to do it, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it was like I always wish I could take lessons. You know? Right, yeah. But because of that, I think that players your age have a little bit more originality than, than players my age in general. Wow. Um, right. uh, one of the real joys of being a guitar player or a player of any instrument is when people tell you you have your own sound. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you can be really good, but if somebody listens to you on a record, they might not be able to say who you are. It's just, well, that, there's a good guitar player, but you can't say there's Jeff Beck or there's, you know, right. whoever, whoever you pick, right? And I think, yeah. Bill, that you're one of those uh, players that's identifiable. And uh, yeah. I don't know if you've ever thought about that or just played. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's interesting. I, I've been working on this, which is, which is uh, derived from a flamenco technique. It's a mm -hmm. picking technique. And interestingly, I haven't really heard very many people play like that. No, I nobody. I've I, never heard anybody play the way you so do it that way. I just go, well, I mean, I know nothing, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I might as well uh, try to learn how to do this because it sure is fun to do. <laughs> and uh, why not? Well, uh, how, about, how about that? Yeah, well, uh, uh, this, incorpor this song incorporates a little bit of that kind of thing. And uh, it's a song called Ode to Darling Corey. And uh, actually, an Appalachian tune, or, or at least that's how I heard it. It probably is older than that, but maybe not. It's a song about a woman who made moonshine and played the banjo and uh, wore a six, uh, 45 around her bosom, like a six gun, you know, around her bosom. I thought that was, I thought that was quite interesting. Anyway, I pr I'm not playing it in an Appalachian style, I'm playing it in a, in a rhythm uh, that's much more closely related to flamenco, and, and it goes like this here. sound a revenue men are coming told to burn your steel house down first time I saw my little darling, oh, she was standing by the sea. Had a 45 strapped around her bosom. Had a banjo, banjo on her knee. Go away, 
little darling, don't hide. Dig a hole in the meadow, dig a hole deep in the ground, dig a hole out on the meadow, I gotta lay my little darling down. Little darling, the moon is big and full. Night bird is whispering secrets of our soul. Will you wake up, little darling? How can you sleep so sound? Big bears on the water and wild sound. Well, <laughs> take that. It's just dance music. It totally so is. So, Big Bear, Love is that, it. that's not it. Those are, those are your lyrics? Absolutely. Those are my lyrics. Okay, very end. cool. Though you uh, tied that in there. Changed us some stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, that let's talk a little wicked. bit. Can, we, can I get geeky as a musician? Yes, and yeah. geeky as a musician. Just talk about some of the things Bill's doing there. First of all, I'm not sure if we've had any shots of his feet, but you're using what's called a stomp board, right? Yeah. And that looks like a, uh, a homemade stomp board. It is. I think you were one of the first guys to really be doing that, too. It's kind of become, you, you can buy uh, fashion stomp boards I know, there's all now. kinds of, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, this was made by Miles Wilkinson in the studio in Edmonton. Oh, okay, okay. Song. cool. Mm -hmm. So just what you're doing alone with your feet would be extremely challenging for some people. Just the, the uh, percussive uh, beat I mean, it's playing. really just the heel toe. To you, it's really just heel toe, but to but be able to do that and keep going with such solid rhythm. It as never, well. I don't think about it, and <laughs> my foot never gives me any trouble at all. I mean, it doesn't get sore. You don't or ever get cramped up or anything. <laughs> wow. I and mean, I, I really, I think it's like that's the, the leg falls. Right? right, yeah. You have to pick it up, but it falls. It sort of almost bounces up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep you in shape. 
And then so often people watch guitar players, they watch what they're doing with the left hand, right? right. I always think that it's really a lot of the time about the right hand. <laughs> and you're doing some really amazing uh, flamenco-like techniques. Um, you're, you're using your fingernails and the flesh of your fingers to play the rhythms that you're playing. Looks like you're using all of your hand, right, as a, as a percussionist. But then you're also mixing that up with the, the amazing thing that you do with your thumb. Right. I'm... So really what you're doing is you're playing four or more notes with one stroke of the thumb, right? Is that, is that kind of what you're doing with that technique? Oh, do you see? No, when you're doing the, the fast run stuff, that stuff, yeah. Yeah, it, it really is a, a very simple thing. You pick the note, you hammer on, and then you do an upstroke. It's, there's three, but if you're playing, you can play it against any kind of rhythm. Uh, against a 4-4 four, four rhythm with 16th notes, well, it's just it's syncopated like crazy. Right. Now, is that something you learned on the bazooki, or is that something you learned on the guitar? No, I learned it on the guitar. See, in flamenco music, there's a technique called al zapua, which you play. So you pick one string, and then you stroke across two strings, and then up again. Then when you play it at speed, it sounds something like this, you know. Beautiful, yeah. So it's, it's a beautiful, uh, very syncopated, very wonderful thing. but. That's where I figured out how to do this, because it's a, it's a very similar sure. uh, technique with the thumb. And you're playing a nylon string guitar, so would, would you shred your thumb if you if you were doing that on steel strings? Uh, well, not necessarily. I've I've done some of that in on steel strings, and uh, but uh, nylon, I really love the top three that are smooth. Yeah, it sounds so, so great. Fast. Beautiful. And your guitar is made. Your guitar is made in Montreal. You were saying. Yeah, just outside of Montreal, a place called La Patrie, Quebec. I just love these guitars that they're made in Canada. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds great, it keeps though. Keeps guys busy. You also do quite a few things um, that sound African, as well as a guitar player. Have you? You haven't done that in this particular piece, but mm -hmm. is that something that you've consciously studied as well as? A bit, yeah. Oh man, it's elusive to me. I mean, anyway, I, I, I do have a couple of books, but it seems like those guys have a real knack for rhythm. Not just mm -hmm. like, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, not that it can't be learned or anything, but it's just uh, maybe it's uh, yeah. just a little further up there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Some of it uh, is pretty straight ahead, but, uh, you know, a lot of it is. I love this, uh, you know. So, you know, that yeah, reminds just, me of Cape Breton. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, almost like, like a well, jig. Just, yeah, like yeah. It, it sounds like a jig. That's what I mean. So we're going to take a short break, but okay. we'll continue on with all of this geeky talk as soon sure. as we come back. Um, you are watching Northwest Music. And we are here in Campbell River at the Shaw TV studios. We will be right back after this break with more with Doug Cox and Bill Bourne. The Cumberland Hotel on Dunsmuir Avenue in Cumberland has live music with a different band every Saturday night. Variety is the spice of life. A half rack of ribs, six wings, a baked potato, and a salad. Now back to Northwest Music with Mary Ruth Harris and Doug Cox. Welcome back to Northwest Music. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We are coming to you from Campbell River Shaw TV Studios. Joining me, Mr. Doug Cox on Dobro and our very special guest, Mr. Bill Bourne.
sir, how can it be you can arrest anybody about old man McShady? He's a bad one. He's a bad man, old man McShady. Yeah, he's a bad man. He's got to change his way. to change his way He said, what do I care about you little baby darling loving wife You will be eating jam all the rest of your natural life He's a bad one He's a bad man Oh man, Nick Shady He's a bad man He's got to change his way to change his way.
Yeah. yeah. Wild and crazy. <laughs> that was fabulous. Can we see that guitar? Like, can you hold it up a bit and maybe turn it around for everybody to see? No that ain't no guitar. Is, That's a or, banjo. Sorry, banjo. This is a banjo. banjo. It's banjo, a Gretsch yes. America. Great. Um, <laughs> oh, it's a Gretsch. Yeah, apparently, That's this was made in the 1920s. 1920s. Wow. It's a wow. Yeah. Now, what was that song, Bill? That song's called Old Man McShady. Is that a Bill Bourne song? Or it's a Bill Bourne song, except it uh, partially derived from an old traditional song called Staggerly or okay. Staggerly. There's several versions of that song. Beautiful. So what, how, is that, how is that banjo tuned? This is an open tuning, just one, five, one, five. Oh, okay. So that, in other words, it's a modal tuning. Yeah. Which means it's not major or minor. So you can go back and forth between the Yeah, you can go minor and major. You'll be happy and sad all at the same time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now, earlier you'd mentioned, um, I forget which one of you mentioned, about um, African influence. Now, oh, yeah. have either of you traveled to the African continent? No. Oh, Not yet. Not yet. Is it on the bucket list? Oh, you bet. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. what is it about, you had started to kind of ex describe the African rhythm and how it's really, it can be taught, but it's hard to maybe match the, the genuine it's just a effervescence of it. I met a man in, in Edmonton who's from Africa and not a professional musician or anything, but he learned all these songs and each one had its own unique rhythm mm -hmm. he started to teach me those things well the difference from one song to the next was sometimes very close mm. and yet he insisted that this is a very subtle difference here in the you got to play it this way in the it's like i think you have to go live there to play playing right. that stuff to really kind of well, really, it. it's, it's a language among musicians, but they really understand it keenly, mm -hmm. and it seems, seems like to me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wonder if it has to do with just their, the polyrhythms of their life, yeah. because their dance moves are, in yeah. traditional African music, also, in, in my uh, approximation, it's like they have more joints in their bodies than we have in ours. Yeah. <laughs> so the moves are, are more, there's more, there's more movement, there's more polyrhythmical. Yeah. Stuff that they just feel, you know, and, and our music is uh, tends to be based around a solid four. I heard someone simply explain one time that we tend to think in four, and they tend to think in two, which leaves oh. these beautiful rhythmical spaces that are, uh, yeah. you know, there's there's a difference between um, ba 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 ba, which is four, right, and right. ba cha, one, two, one. To it. Oh. it leaves all that gigantic space for okay. rhythmical things to happen. Uh, that's really simplifying it, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a pretty, pretty great thing. Yes. Like you can play. Right. It sounds African. It does. It sounds like Spider Man to me. <laughs> <laughs> That is a, well, uh, uh, that's something that Madagascar Slim taught me. It's a real simple thing. But th those guys, they take it to the nth degree. I mean, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. But there's this thing, like Doug said, it's, it's a two. It's like one, two, one, two, one, two. It's a bit like a polka. One, two, one, two, one, two, two, one, two, one, two. So in the end, you have a three over a two. Right. And then that's only the basis of the right. rhythm. Yes. Then it's like a flower right. above that. Like right. it's unbelievable. Some guys are playing two and some are playing six. And right. Some are playing three. And uh, I should mention, Bill, that you mentioned Madagascar Slim. You were part of a wonderful group called Tricontinental. Yes. With Slim and, and Lester Quitsaw and yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, rumor has it that that group might be Doing some things again sometime we're, in the yes in the future. That's great. Yes, yes, we're definitely uh, shooting to put a new record out. Hopefully, we'll see you out here, maybe even yes. at a festival next summer. That would be fantastic. <laughs> and what festival would that be? Mm -hmm. um, you were going to play another thing on the banjo, just a, a solo, oh, yeah. Yeah. solo banjo thingy for us. Yeah, this is from my latest record, Hummingbird. Uh, 
that's available exclusively from my website, billborn.com. Um, it's called Castle of Drum. Uh, I'm going to start that over again. Can you cut that out? Beautiful. Well, that Beautiful. was extraordinary. I was watching Doug when at the very, very beginning, and he's watching you, and he's going, like he's shaking his head like he can't <laughs> believe what he's seeing. That was so intricate, oh, especially at the very beginning. That was lovely. Oh, yeah, it's something I don't really understand what's going on there. I could totally 
envision a hummingbird flying, flittering in and around. That's like, right. That's exactly how they fly. <laughs> I know, yeah. That's amazing that you've been able to master that. That's just extraordinary. Thank you so much. So the album that that's off of is is, is you playing, playing yeah. more than singing, right? That's but right. It's an instrumental record. It's the only instrumental mm -hmm. record I've ever made. Beautiful yeah. record. I've had the pleasure of hearing it. It's, oh, right it's on. wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, it's basically me jamming with myself. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of a blast. You know? <laughs> that is so fun. <laughs> and... Um, I had a, like it's interesting. You go to re record an instrumental record. The first question is like, what are you going to record? I mean, there's a lot of great musicians in this world. Mm -hmm. you know? So it makes sense to record stuff you wrote yourself. Then nobody can compare you to anybody else <laughs> and That's stuff true. like that. I don't Amazing. know. Amazing. Anyway, it's sure a lot of fun to do, and uh, I hope to do more of those kind of things. All right. Well. Unbelievably, we are nearing the end of the show. Okay. So I guess we need to come up with a big finale. Doug, what have you got in mind? Okay, well, I, I tried to get some fireworks, but... <laughs> they, they weren't they allowed. Make it here. Actually, yeah. the fire department was through <laughs> yesterday. They'll be happy to hear that. I think we're going to end off with, a, with, a, with an old blues tune. Robert Johnson's song. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well... You have been watching Northwest Music. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. Joining me has been Mr. Doug Cox on Dobro Today. Nothing else yeah, except right. Dobro. Dobro. And our special guest, Mr. Bill Bourne. And it has been our pleasure to bring you this show. And we have been coming to you from the Campbell River Studios from Shaw TV. Thank you so much for joining us. Take us out, gentlemen. Yeah, okay. To the crossroads I got down on my knees Went out to the crossroads I got down on my knees I asked the Lord to have mercy Help me if you please Standing in the crossroads Try to flag a ride Standing in the crossroad Try to flag a ride Nobody seemed to know me Everybody passed me by I went to the crossroad West Music, presented by the Cumberland Hotel, located on Dunsmuir Avenue in Cumberland. They have live music every Wednesday and Saturday, pool tables, darts, and a menu with everything from chicken to burgers to fish and chips to ribs and wings. Thank you for watching Northwest Music.